Okay, hi guys. So today, I'm not opening the loaded pocket swap yet, but I plan on doing a Valentine related loaded pocket swap um, in the next couple days. So hopefully really soon. Um, but I want to design the actual pocket in this video because I think the tutorial videos end up being kind of long anyway. So I think if I can just do some of the work in this video and then that way in the loaded pocket swap sign up videos all I'm doing is giving the numbers and we can go through it so in here I'm going to show you how I'm designing this um, if there are any items I can uh, link for you they'll be in the description box those would be affiliate links which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items through those links so thank you for using those if you can um, we need to run some numbers guys and I actually just threw away scrap paper that was here and I probably should have kept it but that's okay let me use the other side of this paper I just pulled this paper out because I thought just I need something to plan the uh, loaded pocket with I want to make it look like an envelope and I think that's gonna be really fun but it has its own little issues right as we're working with that so I just pulled out some paper that I can use but honestly I might just use that paper for my swap itself anyway if this works out um, because I want it to do a valentine but like very light colors like fun pastel kind of colors as opposed to like the red and pinks and whites and those kind of things that we normally do um, ooh this is cute okay so I'm gonna use this uh, pen here now normally I do the loaded pocket you know they are up and down, right? I do them in a way that looks like this. Actually, let me grab one. Here I have this gorgeous one from Caprice. So when you open it up, it looks something like this. And stuff goes in the pocket. <laughs> so anyway, it looks something like this. And then we have the pockets, you know, uh, cascading up, I guess, in a, that kind of manner. So what I'm planning for this one is that it's going to be like this. So it's an envelope. It opens up, but that means the pockets need to go a long ways, which will be a little different for decorating because. Um, or width, I guess, in the width, because they're going to be short, right? The short, but wide this way. So you're going to package things a little bit differently for this guy. So I have to think about it that way. So you know I like a five by seven pocket because that maximizes our mailers and all that. So if this area is five by seven, that's great. We need to do our same pockets like the other one. I usually do, I think, one that's like four, two and a half inches tall and four inches tall, like two and a half inches, and the one behind it is like four. But this is only five inches tall, so um, we're gonna change that. And if I do three inches, it's gonna be very high, you know what I'm saying? What you can tuck there, and then the next one has to be like four inches tall. So I think I'm still gonna go with two and a half inch tall pocket. So two and a half inch tall pocket. That means one's going to be like half of this, right? Two, it might even be two inches, but two inches is kind of short. So let's say two and a half. Obviously, this is not to scale because that would be right in the middle. And then the pocket behind it, I don't really want to do four. Maybe three and a half. I planned this on the Cricut. So the Cricut one is slightly different. I already did all the numbers and did it, and I don't know why I didn't write them down while I was working on it. So let's say three and a half, the second pocket. will be three and a half inches tall. Okay. And you guys already know I like the back pocket to be three quarter inches thick and the one in front is only half an inch thick. So we gotta think about that as far as this top part of our envelope, like the front flap or the bottom. So let's just say if this is three and a half inches tall times three quarter inches thick, this one, I make it so it wraps around that back piece so it clears it. So this back pocket, four inches tall, this piece goes through the whole thing. You see how I like it to wrap around? Because that adds to the sturdiness, guys. Not so much for the look of it, because maybe you can make something that looks nicer. It's to add to that sturdiness to keep it from like crushing when it's in the mail and those kinds of things. So that's why I like that, that extra wrapping. So this is times half an inch. Thick, I don't know, deep, I guess is the word I should be using. So this bottom part, I usually design it so that's a separate piece. I don't know if you can see it here. See, she has a separate piece that's glued in here, but I thought, well, I can probably just keep it one piece that keeps extending, right? Um, you can do whatever you like. If you want to make it a separate piece, just do the math on that. But that means this needs to be one and a quarter inches plus a glue, plus the front flap, possibly, or a glue tab. So let's just say this is, uh, I'm gonna say a pocket pocket dashes should really be what I should be drawing here. So this is one and a quarter plus the flap that comes up in front two and a half inches tall, right? That's basically what we're looking for. So a piece that comes out that's still two and a half inches here. That's three and three quarter inches. So this area should be three and three quarter inches 
plus the five inches tall. And then I think I'm just gonna leave it that way because that's already eight and three quarter inches by seven. Eight and three quarter inches by seven. I guess you could put the glue flap up here, but I think it looks nicer when it glues in here. I can't then add more, unless you're using a 12 inch piece of paper. So, okay. So this piece of paper needs to be eight and three quarters by seven. And that's just for the very base. The pocket, if it's two and a half inches tall, seven inches wide, we need glue tab, it needs to clear this whole area. So it needs that one and a quarter again. So let's see. Seven plus one and a quarter times two is two and a half, plus at least an inch of glue tabs. That's nine and a half, ten and a half for the small pocket. And then the three and a half inch tall one just has to, um, oh, I just put ten and a half, huh? By two and a half. That's how high it needs to be. And then that layers together, right? This one's gonna be stuck to this one. And it, again, adds that um, umph to the whole thing, right? Uh, so that's for the small pocket. And then the large pocket is three quarter inches thick. So seven inches wide plus three quarter inches thick times two, that's one and a half, plus the one inch for glue tabs, uh, half an inch and half an inch. So it's eight and a half, nine and a half equals nine and a half times three and a half inches tall. Okay, so we have that. Now we need to design the flap part, which we need a half inch glue tab that is gonna stick up here and then come in to make that flap. So let me just draw some things. We need a glue tab that's half an inch. And then we need to clear the one and a quarter inch, again, coming back out, right, to make the box shape, uh, which is essentially this part. So when it comes out right here, this needs to be one and a quarter at least. I speak, I just, okay, one and a quarter inches in this area. And then the flap needs to come down far enough to meet this piece that's two and a half inches. If this is two and a half inches tall, see, this is basically two and a half and two and a half, right? So I want it to meet there, but then also cut into it like an envelope. But if you cut it from up here, it's gonna look, you're gonna see there's a whole space behind there, right? That's not there. This can't really come all the way up because then you can't see anything cute inside. It has to look something like this with stuff here and then another pocket and stuff back there, right? So it's just a different look, guys. So, I mean, even this looks like an envelope if you put a little something, right? Just the way uh, she has it here, let's say. But I want it to look very envelopey. So what we're gonna do is meet this up two and a half inches, and then from that two and a half, bring it down pointy. So basically a whole five inches, I think. Yeah, let's do a whole five inches on that. So this piece of paper needs to be five, six and three quarters, six and three quarters by seven. So those should be our basic things. now. How are we gonna make it pointy and make it look nice, right? At the two and a half inch. We're gonna have to put this on something and then we're gonna cut it like this. Now, I already did this on the Cricut, so if you have design space, I'll have it linked there for you guys and it'll just cut your pieces for you. It's slightly different than this as far as I think, well, no, I mean, the, the configuration's a little bit the same. It, it just might be a little wonky as far as some of these um, shapes. And then we need matte layers. So, right now, I'm gonna cut a piece of my base paper, nice thick base paper, whenever we do a swap. We're not doing the swap right now, I'm just planning this. Uh, I need a piece of paper that's uh, eight and three quarters by seven, or seven by eight and three quarters, whatever works for you. Six and three quarters by seven, 10 and a half by two and a half, and nine and a half by three and a half, and I will be right back. Okay guys, so we have the flap part that will come to the front, the whole background part, um, this is one-sided paper, or single-sided, should I say. And then the pocket that goes behind the smaller front pocket. So let's talk about these guys. Um, easier, let's start with the larger, the back pocket, the one that's Sorry, taller. Look at my numbers. So the larger pocket, the one that's taller, is actually shorter, right? Because this one has to clear its own space plus the space behind it. But anyway, so the large pocket is uh, three and a half inches tall by nine and a half inches wide. And what we're doing to score this guy is we're gonna score half inch glue tabs on either side, but we're also gonna score the three quarter inches. So half inch for glue tab. Actually, I was gonna turn it on this side. Oh, okay. Half inch and then a three quarter inches from there. So that'd be one and a quarter. So we'll turn it the other way, half inch 
and one and a quarter. Okay, so when we score this, and that's why I just put the pretty side facing out because I always like to kind of score towards where I creased it. This paper is a little bit funky. It's uh, Crafter's Companion, and you see it's kind of wants to crack on me a little bit, but I'm just being very delicate with it. So, okay. And again, I don't have a bottom on this, which um, I just designed them that way because I think it's easier to not have to deal with something else that you're cutting. We'll just bring it around town later. So seven inches wide, it feels really different. It feels um, softer. Actually, this paper is supposedly pretty sturdy, but there we go. Small pocket is gonna go in front of this, but it wraps around the whole thing. So half inch glue tab. And then the one and a quarter inches from there, which would be one and three quarter, right? So one and three quarter. And again, half inch glue tab on the other side. And one and three quarter. Now, I usually don't do a lot of scoring, like bone folding, but this paper is very particular, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I like to just kind of leave it open, just kind of barely scored, because by the time you glue it to this other one, you might have some wonkiness that you want to work out, but either way, this is what this looks like. It looks something like that, and then it goes into the base of our loaded envelope in this case. So, that'll be that. Um, I haven't talked about matte layers, so we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, for the back of our loaded pocket, we have this piece. Again, this is a larger piece. It's eight and three quarters by seven. So on the seven inch side, eight and three quarters, right? On the eight and three quarter inch side, I'm gonna turn this over. It doesn't really matter because I don't have a pattern on this paper, but if you have a pattern, you wanna pay attention. We are going to score it at two and a half inches. So two and a half, roughly. And then I'm making this so that this two and a half inches will glue to this completely and that'll give it some sturdiness and then we're still going to matte layer so you know but again that's just how i designed it i just thought that was best for shipping and all that kind of stuff um, if you want to make this personally and you want to make it with less paper that's up to you but for the swap i would say stick to my numbers because it just adds the sturdiness of the pocket so it doesn't get crushed that easily okay guys so two and a half inches and the next one should be an inch and a quarter from there, which we know is three and three quarters. So three and three quarters. And that is it as far as the scoring on this one. So on the eight and three quarter inch side, we're scoring at two and a half and at three and three quarters. So again, it's a little different because this paper's like longer and it's kind of some wonky, kind of interesting paper. If your paper does crack, then I would say choose something else. Like this, I'm being very delicate with it. It hasn't cracked, but it looks like it wants to, right? It has that tendency, so just be very careful with it. Okay, looking good. And then this is gonna glue to this, to this, to this. And we're having something like that. Okay, so again, we're adding to all that sturdiness. Sturdiness, sturdiness is what we're getting here. Okay, now, to this top part, we're gonna add this guy. And this is the tricky one, so I still haven't really worked this out in my head, but we'll see. So this is six and three quarters by seven. Make sure you have the right side because those sizes are very close to each other, right? So uh, seven inches wide. And on the six and three quarter inch side, we're gonna turn it. On one of the edges, again, if you have a pattern, pay attention, but half inch. And then one and a quarter inches from there, because we're, you know, making that whole top part. So half inch, one and a half, I'm sorry, one and a quarter from there is one and three quarters. So half inch and at one and three quarters. And, you know, I don't really have to score this right now, but oh well, I guess I will. The reason I'm saying that is because we need to do one more thing that I haven't worked out, like how do we make it pointy? Now if you have a box maker, you might be able to figure this out on there, you know? This, we're gonna glue it here, and then this is gonna come around. And right now it's a whole five inches, which is actually pretty cool, right? Um, I have another idea for Mother's Day, and maybe this is already previewing that, but more of like a purse, right? So anyway, we know this is seven inches wide. So that means three and a half inches would be the um, I'm gonna turn it this way. Three and a half inches would be the center, right? So I'm just making like a little circle there, just like some kind of dot. So again, this is handmade. 
All right, let's just caveat that. <laughs> On this side, I'm gonna turn it over here and I need the full two and a half inches and I can go a little bit deeper than that if I wanted. So like, let's say I'm gonna make a little mark right here at, oh. Um, if we had two and a half, this is uh, two and three eighths, okay? And same thing for this side. Now this will be a little bit harder. Actually, I'm gonna put it up here. It might be a little bit crooked because the way I have to butt it up here, but let's put that at the five inch mark, okay? And I, I did say two and three eighths. That means on this side, we're gonna go two and a half and it should be at two and uh, five eighths because you're trying to match up this. Okay, that's just not how to turn it over and mark on this side. So let's do that again. I start off on this side, I marked three and a half. Then I, uh, well, I turned it. Well, actually, there's numbers here, but either way, um, I turned it this way and I marked it two and three eighths. So it's just a little bit bigger than the two and a half, just to overlap a little bit. On the Cricut one, I designed it so it's exactly two and a half, two and a half. And then when I turn it this way, I have to mark it at two and five eighths because that's the same difference, just that, you know, we had to butt it this way, okay? Now I'm gonna take this to my guillotine or something like that, uh, paper trimmer, wherever it fits, and I'm just gonna trim that away. So, and again, this is handmade, so it might be a little bit wonky, but it's not too wonky. So what I'm doing is lining this up so that from this dot to this dot, I'm putting it right on the line here as well as I can. Okay, and we're gonna cut that. Can you see, little dot, little dot, and I'm just like under there. This one, same thing, from this dot to this dot, we're going to line that up. And like I said, it might be a little bit funky, but I think that's the best way I can do it, you guys, check that out. Okay. If that is difficult for you, do not join this swap. You can do a different one. I don't want it to be just like straight across. I really want it to look like an envelope. I think it's really fun for it to look like this. So that's the whole point. Uh, we can leave it pointy. Actually, I was going to round it, but you know what? It looks really cute pointy. I think that's, I like that. Okay. What I'm going to do now is probably start putting it together and then we'll talk about matte layers. So I'm going to cut this at an angle. I just on that glue tab just to kind of make it a little nicer so it nestles in a little bit nicer. Now this is paper that's a little bit slippery, which is kind of a bummer, because that means I'm going to have to wait a little bit longer as I glue these things, but that's okay. Okay, so let's glue this one. Why not? Now I'm going to glue this down, and then I'm going to matte layer that and all that, but we'll talk about matte layers in a minute. I think this is going to be very cute, you guys. Using your best papers, I mean, this is going to be really fun. Okay. I'm going to hold that down, and then I always like turn it over to see kind of where we're at. Man, I want that pulled up just a little bit. I like to put it right to like the left or the right of the score line depending on where you're orienting. So this one I would say it should go to the uh, right of the score line, or the left if I have it this way I guess, right? Now this paper really does react with glue. I don't know, it's just very special paper. Let me look at that. It wants to like bubble a little bit. I don't know. Okay, so this is something like this. Basically, this is gonna be up here. Look at that, and again, that's right at five, so you can line it up right at the bottom. And it's barely clearing this two and a half inch. So that's what I was going for. With this guy, I guess I can put these together and then glue it in, so let's do that. So I always nestle one over the other. I usually put the glue on the glue tab. If you want to divot out the glue tabs like I did with the other thing, you can definitely do that, but I usually don't take the time for this one because it it's fine. Like, it doesn't bother anything. So I glue those two together, and I usually put a little glue under here too, just so that these areas that are touching can also be nice and sturdy. So glue, glue. And then this whole thing gets glued to the back of that. Okay, and then over here, same thing. I know it looks kind of wonky because if you glue it like this, it's gonna look like this. That's not what we want. We need to glue the tab to the glue tab and then just a little extra glue here if you want. So let me turn that over and show you what that looks like. Glue here, 
and uh, glue pretty much on this thing just as high as the other the two and a half inches so you bring them to the ends right and matching up with the end they do give you a little bit of bowing. Oh, I think that's my gardener, guys. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, sorry, guys. I don't really have a gardener. Like, my husband and I, we do our own yard and all that. But um, we don't trim the palms. <laughs> so it's about that time. It's been over a year. Eh, I think. Maybe almost two years. Anyway. All right. So that is set up, guys. So now we're going to bring this over here. We have that top flap. What I was trying to do in this is to see if it's doable to make, you know, the um the flap look like an envelope and be good because basically i want to make like a love notes you know whatever kind of valentine theme i don't really know what to call it yet because i'm like love notes that's a little bit weird maybe crafty love notes i don't know we'll see what we end up calling it but um or like you know envelope full of love pocket full of love whatever so anyway so i'm gonna put glue here and glue here And I'm gonna stick these inside right above that score line. All right, right on the edge, right on the edge, right above the score line. So I'll pay attention to one side more than the other right now, and then I'll go to the other side in a minute. So again, wanting to clear this, but not in a way that's too tight. Let me pick this up just a little bit. Yeah, that's better. And now let's pay attention to this side. <laughs> And it does, when you first stick it down, want to bow because it's like um, all those layers of paper basically in the same space, right, in the same area, but it'll be fine. Do not to worry. All right, we have that, have that, and then we slip in a matte layer here so that um, covers this area plus whatever's going on here. And then we have this piece that's going to come up like this. Oh my gosh, you guys. <gasps> oh yeah. All right. We got it. We got it. And that was not hard at all. You just have to, you know, match this up. Now, the matte layer for this might be a little pickle, but we'll see. I'm always so bad at matte layering. Uh, the second layer, you know, whenever there's something geometric, like a cut in, like that we have there. Uh, I'm going to put little glue again. This paper really wants to react to glue in a funny way, but we'll put this on here. And, of course, by the way, this looks crooked, so pay attention. Really move it over, have it look nice, butt it right up to the bottom, and that's going to make our bottom so now things don't fall out. <laughs> Do not want our things falling out, you guys. I'm telling you, every time we make one of these, it just comes out better than I had imagined. They look so cute. I love the gatefold. That was really fun. I mean, this is a take on the gatefold, right? But look! Oh my goodness. Again, it's just clearing that. Only because if we cut it from up here, you're, you're going to see in there. It's not going to look nice. So we have to do this kind of, this kind of thing. Okay. Matte layers. Let's talk about it. So, matte layers. I need to write this in my little crafty book. I don't know why I'm doing this just on a scrap, but I'll transfer this to my crafty book. All right, so we know this is two and a half by seven, right? So matte layer for small pocket. Um, and I like eighths. I know all of you don't. So <laughs> I'm going to write in the eighths, but you know, you go quarters if you don't like and an eighth or whatever, right? So, well, we'll talk about that. Two and a half by seven, I would say two and three eighths by six and seven eighths. So you would say, I'll say, or two and a quarter by six and a quarter. I'm sorry, three quarters. Okay. I'll show you this to you in a minute. Large pocket, large pocket is uh, three and a half. Is that what we said? I think in my cricket, I think I did four. I'll, I'll reset it to be three and a half. Um, that's fine. That's no problem. Cause I just take you know, half an inch off. Uh, three and a half by seven, whatever. So there'll be three and three eighths by six and seven eighths, or three and a quarter by six and three quarters. That background is five by seven. So back area. I'm just saying that because this area is the same as this. So if you put something on both sides, and as you can see, you probably want to. This is some good paper, but look how it's bending. So I love a nice sturdy pocket. So back area, five by seven. So I would do four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. 
or four and three quarters by six and three quarters if you like quarters. These little spaces, I don't usually gusset, like do anything there. I'm gonna glue that. I'm gonna put some glue in there and make sure it's really stuck down. You see how it left a little gap. Um, this top one, I'll say I would probably go ahead and do a little something. Um, it's one and a quarter by seven, right? So, what do you top, uh, top and bottom? And bottom, it's not really a gusset, but we'll just call it a gusset, okay? Um, again, one and a quarter by seven, so I would do one and seven eighths by six and seven eighths, or one by six and three quarters. And then this piece, yay, this piece, okay, this piece. <laughs> This is the kind of thing that scares me. Even though you can do the math and you think, oh, that'll work, but then when you go to do this part, it won't line up right. So that's the only thing that's scary to me. Um, but I think we should be able to just start off with the same piece of paper. Like, this is five by seven. So let me do some, not do some math, but just do this on my own because I don't want to like throw you guys off with numbers that don't work. So I'm just going to grab some scrap paper. Oh, that's a pretty paper. Let me just grab a scrappier paper than that. Paper that I don't really care about. <laughs> uh, this one. Just for the numbers. So if, I'll be right back. I think the easiest way to do this is, I have my mat layer, just like I would put in the back, four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. Now, if yours is uh, four and three quarters by six and three quarters, go for it, whatever. I think the easiest thing is for me to eyeball this and put it right here. Explain the difference. See, see, I have my little edge, 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 and I'm going to turn this over, and I'm just going to mark it with my pencil. Now, we can probably figure it out, but so there's that. And since I'm using eighths, I'm going to cut this a sixteenth of an inch in from this line in, right? Because we're going to cut that away. If you're doing quarters, you want to cut it an eighth of an inch in, which is actually nicer for you, because <laughs> um, you can come over here put it on here and you know kind of eyeball what an eighth of an inch is which is you know pretty good amount right like this much that little area for me I'm doing a sixteenth so I'm eyeballing this like where the straightness is and how straight it might be and then I'm gonna come in just a little bit from there and hopefully this works okay that was that one now this one too I'm gonna cut just inside of it right because we're trying to get that mat layer and I just think that's the easiest thing without doing math and, you know, who knows. So now I'm lining it up there and hopefully we have something that will work for us. I am calling that good. Look at that. Okay. That's how I'm doing it. <laughs> okay, guys. If you want to do some math and find a different way or just do it the way I did at the beginning where you do the halfway mark and then, you know, um, basically halfway up here, halfway up here, and then cut it, it should work, um, theoretically. <laughs> Sometimes when you're doing triangles or things like this, it just doesn't really work out. I don't know why. So just an idea. So that would be the matte layer for that. Now what I'm going to do is grab some actual pretty papers and go ahead and do my matte layers. So when I come back, I'll have all these pieces cut that we talked about, and we'll just pop them on, and then um, I'll go from there. Real quick, I want to show you the two paper pads I'm be, I will be using. Excuse me. I had ordered some at Michael's and supposedly they were going to be in the store, and all I had to do was pick it up. And when I went there, uh, they had canceled that part of the order, which was the only thing I really cared about. They have a new paper pack this time. Well, I don't know if it's new, I think it is, because I have the red and black and white one from like last year. But the one for this year that's like sweet and soft colors, it's not in stock yet. I'm like, okay, well, I'll just order online which is great, but like I don't have it here right now to show you guys, you know what I'm saying, if I order it. So I need something for right now, immediately. So I don't know, my pockets might be something different by the time we actually do the reveal. But for now, this one had all these cute hearts. So they do have some cute patterns in here. Like some, I'm not saying these are Valentine, they're not. A lot of these are, it says basics, you know, these are patterns for other days. But I do kind of like like this for like the liner, maybe the little checker, the plaid, because where were the hearts? There are more hearts in here, I don't know. There was those, which I really like, but, sorry guys, it's really from this confetti one, the ones I'll be using today. Um, let me open this up. It has a lot of hearts. Like, look at that. What a fun colorway, right? Um, just a little different. This one is the one I want to use. There's this bright one. There's this purple one. There's one with silver and gold foil, not the stars. 
I remember when I'm asking for Valentine or whatever it is, it has to be very Valentine. Um, look at these hearts and different colorways. I mean, even this one works out. Huh. We'll see. And look at this one's just all silver. I mean, you know, I'm using a regular plain paper. Um, if you were to use like white just to make it look like an envelope and envelope I think that'd be really cute of course you want to dress it up a lot because um, it's very plain but I think that'd be very lovely to, like a plain envelope and then on the inside you have a liner I mean how cute is that right so I mean there's lots of ways to play this up I'm not 100% sure what I want to do right now um, but I'm just gonna go for it so I don't want to waste this paper I might have to go back and get more of it because I really want it to be of these little hearts this stuff but I only have two sheets you know um, I should have brought two paper pads. Oh well. So I'm going to pull both these out because I'm sure I'm going to need them both. And I'm going to cut my mat layers. So I'm going to try to do it in a way that's smart. I think on the outside will be all the hearts and on the inside maybe I'll use that pink plaid. Um, and go from there. I mean we can obviously pair it up with something different down here. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> decisions, decisions. Okay. Well I'll be back. I just wanted to let you know I'm using 12 by 12 paper. Now I'm going to show you how you can be a little more like working with this in a way that works out. So I wanted to use that pink paper in the back. So this is again uh, four and seven eighths by six and seven eighths, four and three quarters by six and three quarters if you prefer. Uh, on the outside, I do have this guy. I'm going to cut the flap, but I just haven't done it yet. So this one again, same size as what we just talked about, like this piece. And then I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I want to shake her this. Maybe I want to do some. Uh, what's the thing? Um, I don't know if I'll shake her it, but if I want to do some stitching or add something else to this, you know, it's actually not this one, it's this one. So, in this area. So, this area again is two and seven eighths, no, sorry, two and three eighths by six and seven eighths, right? And from that same strip of paper, what I did was I went ahead and cut the six and seven eighths like this. And it's like an ombre paper. I don't know if you can see how this is ombreing, something like that. <laughs> Uh, there's a piece in the center I'm missing. So I cut that, and then I thought, well, maybe the second one step can also be from the same one. So I just went and cut the three and three eighths. Or it's already cut at six and seven eighths, right? And then I was like, well, that same one can be on the back, because I just want it to be, you know, just kind of continuous or finish up. Cut this one. It was already six and seven eighths. It's still the same strip of paper. I cut it for the four and seven eighths. Right? It's going to go back here. And I still have this strip left, which is perfect, because I was like, well, well, I still have enough for the top part. And look at this. It's even extra. So this piece I'm going to cut to um, a little piece off of it so that it is one and one eighth, right? Which is my measurements. If you want it to be at one, that's, you know, you're going to do that. But hopefully I'm cutting that right. And so I have all of my pieces. And again, really smart way of using your paper, right? I mean, that, again maximize the paper and that's really fun um i don't know if i'm gonna put another piece in here i think i might just leave this white for now because it just looks like an envelope which is so funny because usually you have an envelope liner on this and everything else is white or whatever but however you want to style it you know it's up to you um i don't know that i'm glue these down because like i said i want to do something fun with that first one and maybe with all of them right it'd be cute to stitch or do something different um, and sometimes I'll, I'll like paper punch something. If you're gonna paper punch and you want it to be a little bit bigger, leave it a little bit bigger, do your punching. Maybe I'm gonna add some lace or something cute. I mean, very Valentine-y, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna glue any of this down. <laughs> I was just kind of test it out basically at this point. Um, oh, that's the background one, huh? Yeah, exactly. So my shaker mix and everything's gonna coordinate with all of this kind of pastel kind of uh, Valentine going, you know, and then this little guy. So I'm just going to cut this little guy like I had mentioned before, which is basically to line it up here and have a good idea of where that is. Turn it over, make my pencil lines, and then just cut, you know, a sixteenth of an inch on this side and a sixteenth of an inch on this side. And that'll be it, guys. So that is the basic numbers and all that. When I do the tutorial on the other one, it's going to be more streamlined. Like, okay, we need papers that are this, this, and this. Score this, this, and this. You know, I already know what to say and have it done. So, um, hopefully that gives you some idea. Uh, you know, I know a lot of my gals want to get started. You know, buy your papers, whatever it is. Uh, you know, I can't, you know, just let a big or huge group come in. I usually do 
60 at the most on something like this, so we will see. It is not open yet. Please do not email me, because I already had people emailing me even before talking about this, uh, that they wanted to sign up for the next, you know, uh, the Valentine swap, but I can't do that, guys. Uh, gotta wait just a moment so all right well thanks for watching um i hope that made sense and then yeah we have all this fun stuff again we're gonna pack it in a different way right because it's long ways like this so wide wider than it is tall when before it was tall and less wide all right guys uh thanks for watching i will very soon put up the video for the other um for the swap itself okay so uh i hope this all made sense and that's just kind of how i plan things you know um as easy as I can make it for people <laughs> and then that's it so again if you want to look at the numbers uh, I'm not good at doing any of this stuff in like typed out form so eight and three quarters by seven for that background piece and you're scoring it at two and a half and then at three and three quarters right and that's it uh, the topper piece the top flap is six and three quarters by seven you're gonna score it at half an inch and at one and so the score is at half an inch and at one and three quarters score that was just me measuring remember and then we're going to cut our little this part the way we did we put a little halfway 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 basically i did a little more than halfway though remember so it's a little bit longer um, and then we just cut choo -choo. and then uh, the pockets themselves are for the small pocket ten and a half by two and a half the larger pocket is nine and a half by three and a half and you are scoring those at half inch on either end the small one you're going to score it at the half inch plus the at one and three quarters and then uh, on either end and then the other one you're scoring at half inch on either end and also scoring it at one and a quarter on either end right so and then these are the matte layers <laughs> I'll just leave it there if you want a screenshot but I don't know if you can read my chicken scratch again matte layers you can make those up yourself um, you know you can layer a couple different layers I, this is the minimum i'm talking about you know the one matte layer um but anyway all right guys thanks for watching i'll see you at the next one bye now